many platforms for storytelling. You can um, take the skill into doing storylines for in animation, for um, you know feature writing, for for all sorts of things. So I think really the opportunities have have just uh, multiplied you know, uh, all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, yes, all all of a sudden. So you know, you know, the restrictions that some people. Um, writer that we are concerned about some years back just no longer exist. Yeah. So you would actually advise uh, people into the writing field, right? Yeah, you know, but 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 only if uh, I, you know I don't think the right thing is uh, to um you know to look at ABC the you know professions and then you take it. Yeah. I think the thing is, you know, it's really best if you feel that you love it if you feel that your heart is in it. I would just say, follow your heart. Okay. I, and I don't think that it's it's uh, it works if people have to go into it as one option out of the four possible ones that they could have. Okay. Into. Okay. Yeah. Is is it rewarding for everyone? Those are the words of Charles Onyango Obo, who is a journalist, a writer futurist and the curator of the wall of great africans woga charles onyango obo if you look for him he is a ugandan author a journalist and a former editor of mail and guardian africa he's a former managing director of the monitor a daily ugandan newspaper and a former executive editor for the africa and digital media division with nation media group is considered one of the most finest journalists in Africa. Obo is a political commentator on issues in East Africa and the Great Lakes region. He writes columns since 1993 to date without missing a single week. I had a very short conversation with him and I know that uh, you're going to pick one or two things even in this month when we are talking to authors and uh, publishers. You want to stay tuned to this one. It's going to be interesting. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like... No content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. Another concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, 
africanbooks.com will be starting to announce african writer of the year in other words there will be competitions in all african countries to figure out who is the best published author and i also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other you can have african authors going at it after each other and your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform the thing is that it's an answer to amazon.com you know with amazon what happens you've got to have an account in the americas or whatever or in europe before you can get paid as an author but here the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play so to get started go to africanbooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your african favorite authors enjoy Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, whatever place it is you're tuned on to Life Signatures Podcast. Today we are making a phone call interview with Charles Onyango Obo, who has only 20 minutes for us, and we are talking about writing in the month of July. Charles, how are you doing? I'm fine, Lawrence. How are you? I'm good. Good to speak to you, my friend. Sam here. Yeah, let's just dive in because uh, time is uh, a factor. Let's just dive into this. Did you know that you're going to be a writer at one point in time? Is this something that was an aspiration for you? Um, no, I knew I would be some sort of storyteller. Yeah. But uh, but not a writer. Okay. I, 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 uh, I, uh, I uh, I loved I loved storytelling. I loved um, you know uh, listening to stories. Yeah. I, uh, I you know I had I could turn a phrase when I was young. So I I just um, so there was that sense that I would be a storyteller, but uh, but not a writer. <laughs> I see. So where did the writing come come from? Oh. Uh, Fairly uh, in, in secondary school, but I think it was mostly in, 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 in high school. Yeah. Because uh, as as some people might know, yeah. I uh, I used I used to have uh, I I mean I still have a bit of uh, stutter stammer. Yeah. And uh, and, uh, and and when I grew older, you know, it's just um, it just it was easier. It was easier to write, right? And I channel a lot of energy on that. So I think I think that uh, part of it just comes from, uh, uh, you know, from that. But also, it's um, I was uh, not an activist. I was I had very strong, not uh, philosophical views about the world. Yeah. Um. When uh, when uh, when I was. In secondary school and high school, and uh, it's, it's it's just one way of channeling it. You know, at the yeah. time when I was a kid, yeah, was uh, you know um, to to write and to read and see how other people who whose views I resonated with, who said interesting things which I liked, how much they reflected me. So it it, it you know it was from both two sides, expressing it and relishing. Um, you know, uh, you know, the joy of others who are doing it well. Could you say that uh, you you used to shy away from speaking and you compensated it with writing? Yes. Okay. I see. So now, um, given that you delved into it and uh, started writing and reading at the same time, who had an impact in your life in terms of input on uh, the philosophical? views and so on who intrigued you the most and uh, maybe kind of inspired you into the writing <laughs> meaning as a person or as a, as an author as a person oh, i don't 
not really you, you know our mother our mother was just a wonderful um, storyteller yeah we we adored her and, and you know we just uh, uh, you know it was one of the favorite uh, times of the day you know or yeah. the evening when when she would tell her story so I, I think I would say I would say uh, my mother just the fascination with the story and expression I think it has to be her but I think uh, you know my older brothers were used to um, to read uh, you know a lot yeah and I remember fa- you know fairly young when I was fairly young um my older brother Fred got mm-hmm. us to read uh, go us and me to read Catcher in the Rye yeah by uh, by JD Salinger yeah and it just blew me because i mean you know in some ways i saw a bit of myself in it right um um you know and uh, and uh, and it really just started i became very fascinated by uh, by JD Salinger yeah our father was a total uh George Orwell fan. He, he <laughs> yeah. loved the animal, animal farm. farm. And, you know, he made us, yeah, and you know, yeah. he made us read that yeah. um, when we we're fairly early, and 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 you know, and and just my love affair with George Orwell just started from there and has never uh, ceased. Yeah. Would you say, but, but Animal Farm, uh, Animal Farm is a masterpiece? Oh yes, <laughs> it was incredible. I mean, it's incredible, yeah. and it is just the ability. To, you know it's got it's, it's it's got just this ability to you know to uh to be interpreted in so many ways yeah uh, layers and layers of on you know like an onion on it yeah and i think that that is it is power yeah but uh but uh but when it comes to i think um uh, you know african writing mm-hmm. i uh, <clears throat> i think it has to be uh Taban Lolyong mm-hmm. and uh and Okot Pabitek. Mm. It's 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 uh, it's uh, and, and 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 you know I remember when I read Taban Lolyong's uh, the last one. Uh, yeah. I I I'd not seen, I'd not read yeah uh something like that. So it you know it just blew me away. And I just like the irreverence yeah. of both Taban and uh and uh, and the court be take they are very very iconoclastic yeah they just encourage you um you know to be very contrarian in a very very smart sort of way yeah so uh, you know those uh, those two would have to uh, you know to be up there and then later on uh Christopher King who was a family uh, favorite yeah um you know and um, you know we just everyone in the family just love talking about him and we talked we talked and argued about his stuff and of course the big one eh? yeah catch it in the rye yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean not 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 catch it catch 22 you know, catch 22 ever. yeah 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 <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah nice. so that was uh, that must have been uh, the joy of very many people too yeah yeah is, is that what informed your choice to go and study journalism um yes you know and and, and you know the in um, when when i was at makere you know we had uh, we had a lot of what you know underground thinking organizations let me put it that way yeah um you know um there was a lot of discussion about society about where Uganda was going mm-hmm. about the world it was very internationalist Mm-hmm. Uh, it had a very very strong leftist element to it mm-hmm. so it's it's you know from there when uh, when uh, uh, amin was overthrown mm-hmm. all of a sudden there was this opening for uh, for uh, people who were in my kind of situation yeah to be able to do something in uh, you know the public space and the only you know, um, thing available for those of us who were ever too young to be involved in politics yeah. or weren't interested in it was uh, to write. Right. And, uh, and, and you know, Wicked Topic was, uh, had, had just opened up. It was very exciting. I happened to get uh, um, 
you know something there as uh, basically an intern uh, you know mm-hmm. carrying papers and you know, writing things for the smarter people mm-hmm. or, or, or rather people who go to a smarter mm-hmm. uh, you know for them so you know so so I put my foot in and uh, and that was it I see yeah. let's 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 answer this question uh, Charles because from from what you're saying there there are some subtle issues that are, are coming up if if you are to talk to let's say you talk you're to talk to kids about the power of the pen and the power of writing what would you tell them you know uh, from the backdrop of uh, in the country at the highest level in Uganda at the moment arts people are not being looked at are not being championed um, well so to speak but if you were to tell people, or maybe the society at large, about the power of writing and the power of the pen, what what will you tell us? Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it 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 really is incredible. If if uh, if uh, well, I mean, you have to work hard at it. But but if you do the work and you and you you get reasonably good at it, it's just an incredible world. I mean, you know, I I I have. Uh, I have uh, got out of trains, you know, mm-hmm. in uh, you know in the U.S. I remember, you know, this time I was in Washington and I got off a train, yeah. and uh, and you know, and someone just uh, stops me and says, "Are you uh, Charles Onyango Obo?" Yeah, and uh, I mean, I just said, "Oh my God, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is this white dude." I mean, you know, then he says he's been reading my, uh, you know, uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, on the train, I'm traveling in Europe. I've had people do this for me. Yeah. And uh, I remember I went one time in rural Goma. Uh, yeah, India. We're driving, you know, no, in 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 DRC Congo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, huh? And uh, and and so we wanted to. There was a town, you know, and and we kind of stopped. And we saw the guy had rigged up some electricity. There was electricity in the town. Mm-hmm. And we noticed one of the guys had, uh, you know, a fridge. Mm-hmm. And, and so we asked him, uh, you know, do you have cold water? He said, uh, yes. And uh, he said, you, I think I know you. <laughs> you know, you, you must be, you, you know, you must be, uh, you know, just you know, the guy who writes. You can't buy the water, you know, you get it free. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's just incredible that this, this has been my experience just, not just in East Africa, but really all over the world, and it's it's, it's so rewarding, eh? Yeah. Um, you know, and then people will go. You know, they have literally clipped all your articles. They, yeah. If if you meet people, uh, you know, I uh, I was taken out of the line one time. Mm-hmm. I was at Kenya Immigration. Yeah. I, I was had had gone to renew my work permit and residency. Yeah. So, so this woman uh, walks. She was obviously the chief, you know, with the chippers on her their white shirt. Yeah. And she walks up to me and says, "Are you uh, Charles Nyango Oba?" I said, "Yes." She said, "Get out of the line and follow me." So I am panicking. <laughs> I am panicking. And I said, "You're oh, used to God. that." <laughs> uh, what What has happened to my application? There's something. With it. So she walks me into her posh office. Yeah. And I sit down, and then she asked me, do you want tea? I said, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. And then she said, um, you know, uh, recently I uh, I finished my uh, my master's. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said uh, it was on conflict resolution and, you know, this, um, you know, in the Great Lakes. Yeah. And then she told me that without you are writing and reporting on DRC Congo. Wow. I don't think I would have done wow. my, uh, my master. Wow. So she said, you cannot stand in line. <laughs> yeah. For as long as I am in, you know, the immigration chief. Yeah. So, it's beautiful. Nice. Uh, 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 and by the way, um, a small research about you reveals that you've been in and out of uh, trouble with police and the governments and and so on because of writing. So why are you saying it's beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So 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 you know so so there is that and 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 then it's 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 really you can use it as a platform. Yeah. For 
for very many things, particularly in uh, today's age. There are so many platforms for storytelling. You can um, take the skill into doing storylines for in animation, for uh, you know, feature writing, for for all sorts of things. So I think really the opportunities have have just uh, multiplied you know, uh, all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, yes, all all of a sudden. So you know, you know the restrictions that some people. Um, Writer, we are concerned about some years back, just no longer exist. Yeah, so you would actually advise uh, people into the writing field, right? Yeah, you know, but 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 only if uh, you know. I don't think the right thing is uh, to um, you know to look at ABC, the you know professions, and then you take it. Yeah, I think the thing is, you know, it's really best if you feel that you love it if you feel that your heart is in it i would just say follow your heart okay I, you know i don't think that it's it's uh, it works if people have to go into it as one option out of the four possible ones that they could have okay into. okay yeah is, is it rewarding for everyone sorry is it rewarding the, the writing is it rewarding for everyone in your opinion <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, uh, like for everything else, not not for everyone. But you know, uh, they 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 are uh, people who do better at you know at anything um, yeah. than others. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But uh, but that is usually because not all of us have the possibility to be in a place where we can turn our opportunities into. Yeah. Um, something which is rewarding in, yeah. a, in a professional or even a business sense. I mean, some of us made a, in a very good living out of it. Yeah. But I'm also aware that uh, very many people uh, did it, and it is just the story in the world. So you know, it's 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 uh, that shouldn't be a reason against it. Mm. Yeah. You know, the fact that not not everyone will succeed. I think the thing is that. Just try to be the one, you know, one of those for whom it is rewarding. So the question will be, uh, Charles, uh, how I know there is no fixed answer to this, but if you are to advise someone who has the first tick, you say that they want to, they feel like they they feel like they want to write, and um, seeing what you have already accomplished out of this, how would you advise someone? What would you tell someone who wants to make it? In, in writing and to be rewarded, what do you think they should do? What does it take? Um, I think, I think one, first of all, you know, they really have to put in the proverbial 10,000 hours. Right. It's, 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 it's no. Uh, um, secondly, they should, there is a, there is a tendency for writers and artists to be rec reclusive. Mm-hmm you know to seek solitude and i think that it is important to to be able to find some solitude to put your mm -hmm. writing or whatever art you are working on together mm -hmm. but i think that it is very important to be very outward going yeah to embrace and just mix in the community just uh, just just gives you the story that enriches your life and you're able to um you know to to expand yeah um you know the you know this you know the story options and the points of references that you can use for your so mm -hmm. they should go out but but also it's that that actually then creates the networks that mm -hmm. you know um if you do right um those are the networks that give you a work wings you know the guys who will publish it yeah. the guys who will recommend it the guys who will put you in situations where you can um you know take your work to a higher level yeah. and make it both you know emotionally and uh, and and you know financially rewarding right. so do that but but it's really really the hard work and third uh you know um just it's it's you know, and this is the thing that um, if there is, if if you can fix a car engine, for example, mm -hmm. if you're a good mechanic mm -hmm. or engineer, mm -hmm. 
they are really at a certain point they are there are two three ways to do it and and you know and that's it mm-hmm. but the thing with writing is that they are one million ways yes. you can tell in a yes and uh, and i think that uh, that 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 is the thing and the only way you do that is that you have to keep learning yeah you have to keep reading what others do you have to keep listening you have to find sources of of teaching so it's just a certain humility so as long as you're able to soak that in you know and and just to be to be able to learn to you know to improve your art to be alive to the fact that you know um you know that both you can do this thing one million ways mm-hmm. and that honestly you know um the the two three ways you do it is just a very, very small part Yeah. of uh, the possibilities and the expert there. It uh, and if you're alive to that, eh, yeah. I think you'll make it work. Nice. So that that leads me to ask this question even as we're trying to wind up. The creativity um is it like innate? Is it also the part of the hard work because you're talking about a million ways of doing this which may, m- tells me that there's a bit of creativity. In fact, there is a lot of creativity in writing. Is it for guys oh, who yes. are born with it or is it also part of something that you create by hard work? I think I think I think it is both. Eh? Yeah. You, you know you can uh, you can create it through hard work. But but you can be born with it. But you know the thing is that if 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 you're born with it eh, mm-hmm. and you don't put in the work, eh, mm-hmm. it still won't come to life. Yeah. You know that is you know the thing. You know you you uh, if 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 you you know sleep up to 2 pm every day and yeah wake up and have a beer and watch tv and yeah. you know go to sleep at 9 yeah and it won't happen for you however talented you are okay so i think that uh, you know that um, whether you are talented or you know you master the craft through learning and you know uh, trial and error yeah i think that you know the hard work is constant it's a constant thing okay there you go and it's noted uh, charles that you <laughs> you have a, a notable what is it called a notable fit as in you've consistently written articles daily is it daily or you've never no, missed weekly. a week <laughs> weekly You've never missed a week for how many years now? I've not missed a week since 1993. <laughs> that's that's how many years? I'm not so good in mathematics. That's 30. Uh, uh yes, that is uh, uh 29. 29 years writing every single yeah. week. Where do you get your content from? <laughs> <laughs> is it from what you've just told us that you've got to uh, you know outgoing uh, a million ways of doing things you you, you don't you, yeah. you, uh, um in in this month I've been asking all of the interviewees one question about the so-called writers block what what do you say about that yeah it <laughs> it <laughs> happened but you know I you know you you are like overcome it you, you know there are two things you know there, there's one thing which I do Yeah. I uh, I uh, I I tune when I'm working I tune on uh, I tune useful radio you know they are they are some very good programs they get the programs of programs like the BBC Outlook so I do a lot of those yeah. when I'm driving in my car I uh, I do audios you know I have story reading yeah. I have speeches I have you know those things you know I mean I play a lot of that yeah. I watch a lot of documentaries and uh, then really i pay a bloody lot of attention to what people are saying and doing right you attentive yeah, you know. yes i am i am attentive i never sit at the front of anything <laughs> if mm. i can avoid it mm. so so 99.9% of the time i'll just sit at the back of the room yeah and um, you know and and, and just um, just try to you know to take a vantage point of an observer right like a fly on the wall probably exactly right yeah. and, and that's how you you do it that's how you do uh, i don't know how many they are like 29 years uh, every single week 54 is it 54 week 54 weeks per month per, per year 
in 29 years. That's quite a number. Uh, I write uh, since, uh, actually, since 1993, then I've written my column in the East African since 1994. Yeah. And I've written the one in Nation since 2003. So I write three columns a week, actually. And I've not missed any of them. <laughs> goodness, goodness, goodness. Whoa. That's, that's, so even as we come to a close, Charles, I know you've, you've, you've got to yeah, go. Yeah. But even as we come to a close here, imagine you are talking to Hmm, S6 or uh, university graduates, and uh, some of them have uh, identified writing as the path that they want to take. What will be your advice to them? What would you tell them to do? Today, I'll tell them just go for it. Just go for it. Just just have a blog out there. Yeah. Uh, do a thread on Twitter. Um, you know, and just see how it goes. I would just tell them, you know, to to go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, or if 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 they're not able to reduce it to formal writing, I'll tell them open a folder yeah. on your laptop and, yeah. uh, and just and scribble it there. Dump it information there. Useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. As in, uh, no rocket science. Uh, I mean, no point one, point two, point three. It's just go for it. Yeah, just just go for it. Yeah. And, and 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 this is the other thing, you know, because you ask, how do I do these things? Yeah. For so long, mm -hmm. just really try and be healthy, <laughs> a healthy <laughs> lifestyle. Really. <laughs> okay. If uh, if if, uh, if you are on a drip and you know you uh, you know uh, you know, you you, you hang over or something and fell down the stairs, you know, you won't be able to rise. You're right. So it's good to be, yeah, you know, to be helped. Okay. Well, Charles, thank you so much for having spared some of your wow. precious time to come and talk to us on okay. Life Signatures Radio about the subject of writing. You are an icon in that department, in that area. Have you mentored a successor? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are so many. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. All right, Laura. Sir. Okay, uh, Charles. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.